Hello, and welcome back to Titan Sports. I'm Eddie Brueger. Hey, everyone. I'm Colin Costigan. How's it going? I'm Francisco Molina. And I'm Noah Segovia. We're here to get the ball rolling to provide you with your weekly sports updates. Welcome to Titan Sports. The NFL hosted the 2024 draft this past weekend in Detroit. The Chicago Bears had two first-round picks, including the number one overall pick. The Bears selected quarterback Caleb Williams from USC at number one overall and selected Rome Odunze, a wide receiver out of Washington, with the ninth pick of the first round. Quarterbacks Jaden Daniels and Drake May were drafted two and three after Williams. The biggest surprise of the draft came from the Atlanta Falcons, who took Michael Penix Jr. from Washington. That comes after just weeks after the Falcons signing quarterback Kirk Cousins to a four-year, $100 million guaranteed deal. To end the draft, the New York Jets took safety Jalen Key from Alabama. Key will now be known as Mr. Irrelevant for being the last pick in the 2024 draft. Stephen Curry adds to his trophy collection as he wins the 2024 NBA Clutch Player of the Year. The trophy adds to many of his awards, including two MVPs, an NBA All-Star MVP, Western Conference Finals MVP, and an NBA Finals MVP, and nine All-NBA selections. The award was down to three players, Stephen Curry, Chicago Bulls' DeMar DeRozan, and OKC Thunder's Shea Gilgis-Alexander. With Curry leading in clutch scoring, a stat defined as scoring in the last five minutes of the fourth quarter or in overtime, with the differential being five points or less, the award was bound to go to Curry. DeMar DeRozan came in a close second in voting as he got 34 place votes. He was second in clutch scoring. He had a very appealing case to become clutch player of the year. The amount of first place votes wasn't enough for the Bulls superstar as Curry ended up having 45 first place votes. Curry becomes the second player to win the Clutch Player of the Year award as it was first handed out last year. It was De'Aaron Fox who won the inaugural, or inaugural trophy, with Jimmy Butler coming in second and DeRozan in third. Although it is an honor, this trophy is not enough for the four-time champion, as he is already prepared to win it all coming next season. The CSUF women's tennis team is coming closer to the gold as they defeat number three seed Hawaii Rainbow Wahine 4-2. With the Big West playoffs in play, anything can happen as many upsets are happening in the other end of the bracket. This win will take them to the semifinals where they will face seventh seed UC Davis. Before the matchup, weather was a factor for the conference as a whole. Rain delayed the start of the match between Long Beach State and Cal Poly, causing a two-hour delay for CSUF and Hawaii. This delay did not upset the Titans, as they improved their record to 16-8 and for the season, and advanced to their sixth Big West semifinal in the last seven seasons. What a tight battle it was throughout the first matches, as the score was tied 2-2. Two two. The Titans would secure the doubles points and a singles point, while Hawaii scored two single points in the end. Crucial wins came from CSUF's Jose Uzaru and Milana Gervigan to help seal the win. The Titans will face the seven seed UC Davis in the Big West Championship Finals. With the Aggies upsetting the CSUN Matadors and CSUF defeating UC Davis last matchup, it'll be hard to predict the outcome of the two. The winner of the match will be facing either number one UC Santa Barbara or number five Cal Poly. We send good luck to the Titans and we hope for good news this week. The first place Cal State Fullerton softball team hosted Cal Poly this weekend for a, a three game set. The Titans played a doubleheader on Saturday and wrapped up the series with a day game on Sunday. The first game of the doubleheader on Sunday was a thriller as the Titans had to battle back in the last inning down to their final strike and down two runs. Hannah, Hannah Bercera ripped a double to left center, scoring two runs. Kika, Kike would walk it off with a hard grounder to third, scoring Bercera. The Titans would jump to an early 3-0 three, three lead in the second game and never look back. They won the second game 7-1. In the finale of Sunday, the Titans would shut out Cal Poly as Rainey Chambers and Garcia would combine 
for a four-hit shutout. The Titans swept Cal Poly and are now 18-3 in conference play. The Titans travel to Hawaii for their final road series of the season this weekend. The CSUF men's baseball team recently played the Arizona State Sun Devils. Here's our Matt Rosoff with the news. The Cal State Fullerton Titans wrapped up a quick two-game series with the Arizona State Sun Devils on Wednesday night at Goodwin Field. The Titans lost the first game of this series by a score of 3-1. to one. The Titans got the scoring started right away in this game with four runs in the very first inning. Nico Regino hit an RBI double to get the Titans' first run of the game, and starting catcher Waldy Perez stepped up with the bases loaded and drove in all three men. That made the score 4 to nothing in what turned out to be a big offensive night for Perez. The Titans added to their lead with Eli Lopez's second home run of the season, a solo homer to make it 5 to nothing. Perez also added a bases loaded walk for the Titans' sixth run. The Titans led 6 to 1 after the 3rd inning, but the Sun Devils offense scored a few runs between the 4th and 5th inning to make the game a little bit closer. Kian Vu whacked a two-run single in the top of the fourth to cut the Titan lead in half, and Harris Williams hit a solo homer in the fifth inning, his fifth home run of the season, to get ASU within two runs. The Titans promptly stole back the momentum with six runs of their own in the home half of the inning. Jacob Shart and Colby Wallace each drove in two runs on RBI base hits. Perez had an RBI double, and Max Ortega walked with the bases loaded to make it 12-4 for the home team. Elijah Ramos added an RBI double in the sixth inning, and Perez notched his sixth RBI of the night in the seventh inning with another hit. It was 14-4 Titans, and the game was called on the mercy rule. All right, stay tuned for our roundtable discussion coming up right after the break. So I'd first like to begin talking about the NFL draft this past week. A lot of big names, obviously no, sh like no shock there. Caleb Williams goes number one. Uh, Jaden Daniels was another popular name. A lot of, he did go number two, a lot of people predicted, but they weren't entirely sure. And then I know we also mentioned that Michael Penix Jr. was the big shock of that first round early on. Um, there were also another player who was also drafted high we didn't mention, but Marvin Harrison Jr. is gonna be a great receiver for the Cardinals. Hopefully he can carry on his father's legacy. Um, also, players like Bo Nix, he's going to be, that might be an interesting situation in Denver now that they have Zach Wilson as well. And then at the very end, the Chiefs finally got a really good receiver in Xavier Worthy, as we know, broke the 40 yard dash record. So yeah. we know he has the speed. Um, I want to know from you guys, what team do you think walked away from this draft feeling really good about their spot? I'm going to go with the obvious, which is going to be the Chicago Bears. You know, obviously have the number one overall pick with Caleb Williams, but then they also got that number nine pick, right? Where they got their offense going to the next level. We know that GM Ryan Poles is doing, um, making some changes in their offense. They also got Keenan Allen in the off season, right? So they're definitely trying to work on that offense. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're a Bears fan during this rebuilding era, you should be happy because this is a whole new identity. We've always known that the Bears have been a, a football team of pure defense. Now they're switched it around and they're going to be known as a team in the National Football League as a team of offense. Yeah, I'm going to go with my hometown team, the LA Rams. I think Les Need and Sean McVay prioritize the defense this draft because of Aaron Donald retiring. And they did a fabulous job. Okay, they picked up Jared Verse with the first round pick at pick 19. Had six years after we made the first round pick in 2016. So that was a big pickup. Okay, and then we got his teammate from Florida State, uh, Brandon Frisk, 
And then we also got a kicker because the Rams need a kicker. But yeah, overall, good job for from Snead and McVay. They really prioritized the defense. Yeah, I agree with you, Francisco, on the, the obvious one with the Bears. Like you already said, I think that kind of rebuild, this boost after the draft is what they'll need to come back strong next season. And I also have to mention my Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, I think they had a great pickup with Xavier Worthy. Uh, I know it was between him or Adonai Mitchell. Uh, some people were saying Mitchell might have been a little bit better because he's a little bit taller with a pretty much similar 40-yard dash, not a record breaker, but pretty quick. But either way, I'm happy with it as a Chiefs fan. I think we got a good pickup. I think the team, honestly, the Chiefs are another team that's going to be underrated in this situation because they finally, Mahomes won the Super Bowl with who? Who's he throwing to outside of Travis Kelsey? I mean, yeah. he lost so many games because his receivers had butterfingers. So I, it's just like the fact that they got a really good receiver, I think that's going to be an underrated pick for them. I actually kind of disagree with the Bears. I believe that they have a good team, but my thing with the Bears is they've never been able to run a quarterback system like, they're the worst in the league at it. They've ran through so many quarterbacks since Jay Cutler in the last 15 years. I don't see – I think Caleb Williams is going to be different, but, like, we all thought Justin Fields was going to be another guy who could do that for him, and he couldn't even do it. So we'll see how he does in Pittsburgh. Yeah, we know that the clock is now on the GM because yeah. if he can deliver, this is the second time you've had to rebuild with a quarterback. If he can't do it this time, I don't think he has a job much longer. The biggest thing has always just been coaching, and they've never been able to, like, like form – like, their rivals know how to draft quarterbacks. I don't know how the Packers do it, but they find a way. The Bears have not been able to do it. Yeah. So hopefully that changes for them. We'll see. As far as underrated picks for me, though, I actually am going to go with uh, Joe Alt, I believe. That was a lot – that people didn't yeah, like, but here's what I'll say: the Chargers need <laughs> they need <laughs> linemen. Like Herb, uh, Herbo can't be running around like that all the time. Yeah. So I mean, I'm, I think that is an under another underrated pick. So I, I also might say the Chargers uh, really feel better about themselves as well. Also, I was saying that division: the Raiders with Brock Bowers, yep, uh, All American, talented, award, tight end. He got so many awards in college football. Tremendous. Uh, uh, pass blocker and run blocker for the Raiders. Even though the fans may disagree with that pick, I think that was a good move by the Raiders front office and a great move by Anto Antonio Pierce. Absolutely. I think one of my favorite steals of the draft was just just Jazar Newton. Sorry, that was a uh, big word to say, but Jazar Newton, a lot of people thought that he was going to go in the first round. Um, however, one of the things that knocked him down was his size. A lot of people were discrediting, discrediting his size for being a defensive lineman, but one of the things that people really talk positively about this rookie is that he knows how to have that skill set. He knows how to play that position, and I think the commanders did a good pickup with him, and it's just going to add more fuel to that deep line that they already have. Right. Yeah, and while the uh, obviously the NFL, the future is looking bright, but unfortunately, the future is not looking bright for the Lakers. Uh, we're going to get into that right now. I want to swing it over to this side of the table because I know we have some very depressed uh, Laker fans over here, and I want to hear from them first. Just Throw it all out there. You know, Colin, that hurt more than a breakup. I ain't gonna lie to you. That hurt more than a breakup. That, gloves are off. That hurt more than my last breakup. I ain't gonna lie to you, Noah. Okay. Uh, to have Jamal Mary twice, not once, twice. Is this the dagger? Hit you with the dagger and then yeah. dunk on LeBron moments before that. It, it broke my heart to see but at the end of the day, you have to take your hats off to the Denver Nuggets for that kind of team that, you know, they've been able to orchestrate the past couple of years. And now it's definitely their time to defend the championship. It's they're running the NBA now. But I think we can all agree in one thing that this NBA playoffs has been telling us. It's the NBA has officially turned the page. Our superstars that we grew up with, the LeBron James, the Kevin Durant, you know, the the Curry's, they're now in their latter part of their career. And these new kids made it. Kawhi obvious. can't even play in a series. Kawhi right? can't even play in a series, right? Yeah. They're the they're like one of the last uh, groups to Westbrook play. Westbrook is like, he's in shambles now. Right. He's not looking good. Absolutely. What are these young kids showing us? It's their turn now, you know. And when I look at Jokic and I look at Murray, I, I know they have different, different, similar. Um, sorry, different playing patterns, but they remind me of a young Shaq and Kobe, where they were just getting started, right? And definitely, we are in a new era of NBA basketball. And I think yesterday was the first day that it started. Yeah, I think, honestly, the Lakers struggle from game one uh, to the end of the series. Honestly, I think they suffer from the mile high blues. Yeah. Because, honestly, is it 12 and 1 against Denver? Yes, the last 12 and 1. Okay, that's officially. Okay, 
not just Murray, but you also have to give credit to KCP, Gordon, etc. And the thing with me, right after the game, there's some question marks to the Lakers. Right. Okay, Darwin, Darwin Ham's future. Honestly, um, looking at this whole series, this whole drama with D'Lo not, not sitting on the bench, I didn't like that, but at the same time, you need to find a coach, Palenko or Genie Bus, who respects the players and the players respect them. And I would love to see what Palenka does this offseason because, again, the spotlight is on the Lakers once again. But the question is, he's only been there for a couple seasons. They went yeah. to the Western Conference. Can you really justify firing a coach and then having to rebuild again with LeBron's career coming up so close to the end? I 100% believe that it's still worth it because you heard his comments. He knows he's out. I think yeah. he knows. You can't say what you wanted to say, like what he said. I thought when I woke up this morning and saw that quote, I thought it was a fake quote. I thought right. it was to see that he basically just said, oh, when you have one, one of your starters who's constantly, you know, wetting the bed for 10 days straight, the, what am I supposed to do? That Those are his words. When you hear that from a coach, it's like, well, he's not taking accountability for what he did. Most coaches like like to reflect on their season and try to be positive or at least admit where they went wrong. And he just straight up is just throwing players under the bus. And then you also have D'Lo's comments where he literally is talking in third person about himself. He's like, pretty good year for D'Lo. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, what? after you yeah. dropped a donut hole in game yeah. three, that's mm -hmm. what you're going to say? It's like, I don't, like, he lost that locker room. So I 100% think he's gone. And I understand, I feel like even though they made it to the Western Conference Finals last year. I believe it was more so that the players and LeBron and all of them were coaching themselves more so than they were being coached. Yeah, you see all those multiple videos where LeBron uh, gets the playbook and does whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Eddie, your thoughts on this new generation of players showing they're taking over the league? Yeah, I think it's definitely like in the games that we've seen, like you already said, the older players, it's kind of starting to have their time to head out. And like thinking back at the past couple games for the Lakers, you know, both games, Jokic with the assists was just the killer. And of course, Jamal Murray with the two clutch shots in either game. I think that just the newer players, um, they, they're definitely taking over, like you said. And for me, I'm hoping maybe to it would be cool to see LeBron with Bronny for kind of a last dance of their oh, own right, on right. the Lakers, um, but we'll have to see. Yeah. Well, I'm just gonna say that as much as that has been out there, it ain't gonna happen. That's <laughs> I'm just gonna say that's right. it ain't gonna happen All right. because I have honestly, as an NBA fan, obviously I loved watching that. And as a Laker hater, I loved seeing that. I feel bad for you guys, but at the same time, it's there's a reason no team has come back from 3-0, and I was tired of all the Lapuki Glazers yeah. coming, trying to say like, oh, it's yeah. gonna come, like he's gonna be the first one to do it, he's gonna become right. the GOAT. I'm yeah. like, Let no, stop that. Like, yeah. stop it. It's not, that's, there's a reason it hasn't been done, and the Nuggets proved why, but I was yeah. glad that you gave props, because the Lakers played great. I'm not gonna say that they just got walked, because no. they, I have like here, they led over 150 minutes, compared to the Nuggets, who only led for 50 minutes, and yet the Nuggets still took four of those five games because yeah. it's they know how to close a game they do and that's they, just how it is they'd be down 20 and they wouldn't look stressed and i was like yeah. as a lakers fan i still didn't feel safe when we'd be up 20 and rightfully so we lost the series four mm -hmm. to one yeah and as sad as that was i know for laker fans i'd really like to talk about softball now yes. because it's been something we haven't really so been fun. able to talk about yes. a whole lot um, 32 and 15, and you mentioned 18, or I mentioned, sorry, excuse me, I'm forgetting my own what I said, but 18 and three in conference play. Um, they're ne um, right behind them actually is Long Beach. They're only two games back in uh, conference play, but real quick from you guys, I just wanna know, they need to, their last two series are against Hawaii and Long Beach. How do you think they're gonna fare for that? And do you think that they're gonna get their revenge? Cause I know Long Beach knocked them out of conference play last year. I think they need to stay in the momentum that they've had all year long is the coaches know what they're doing, the players know their roles, continue that. This is a time where either we see teams do so great in the regular season, but once it's playoff time, they kind of crumble. If they can stay together and just stay locked in, they can even make a run, I believe, in the national tournament. Yeah, I think if they just win two out of the three from the Long Beach series, they'll get the division. Yeah, they've been having a like really strong season this far. It's been ca ca catching all of our attentions. So yeah, I think if they stay strong throughout, they, they've got a good shot at it. Yep. All right, we wish them nothing but the best to finish off Absolutely. the season. Yeah. All right, Titans, that is all the time we have for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Colin Costigan. We hope to see you again. I'm Francisco Molina. Thank you for watching. I'm Noah Scovia. And I'm Eddie Brueger. Give us a follow on Instagram and Twitter, if you haven't already, at C Titan TV CSUF to keep you updated on all things sports.